All right. Well, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today for another in our series of Lunch and Learn programs leading up to Environmental Day at the Capitol. Today, we're going to hear from Lonnie Lott um, regarding the Arizona um, Heritage Alliance and the Arizona Heritage Fund and uh, some legislation that will be considered this coming week uh, to, to fund the Arizona State Parks Heritage Fund. So uh, with that, uh, Lonnie, you wanna go ahead and take it away and thanks so much for doing this. Absolutely, and thank you for asking, Sandy, and welcome everybody. Um, this is a pretty robust PowerPoint, so I'm gonna whip through it. Um, I am honored to be asked to do this for Sierra Club, the Grand Canyon uh, chapter, and I'm looking forward uh, to the Environmental Day uh, on February 9th. I've got new collateral, new little promotional items that's gonna go on my table, so make sure you stop by and get something that's really fun. Anyways, um, this is who we are. Uh, the Arizona Heritage Alliance, so yes, we are a 501c3, we're probably in our 30th year if we really want to date ourselves. And we're a statewide um, membership. We survive um, basically on donations, grants, and memberships. We take no public funding. And we have an enthusiastic woohoo board of directors. There is about, I think we um, have 20 active board of directors. And then we have a growing advisory board of about 11. Um, and we do pull in our board, uh, especially when we're doing educational um, outreach during uh, legislative sessions. I am their very uh, part-time executive director and have been working with them for about five years. Uh, we're dedicated to carrying out our mission. We speak at different conferences and workshops. And then we have regular communication regarding um, uh, activities, legislative alerts, uh, we have a quarterly e newsletter and we try to share things around the state that are related to our mission. Um, and so what is that? Our mission is to preserve and enhance Arizona's historic, cultural and natural heritage. Now we just went through a strategic planning session and, and reviewed our mission and our goals and they all are the same. They've been pretty much the same. Um, we don't really uh, change our mission or look at different goals, how we carry them out often changes, but really our number one priority is to protect the integrity and voter intent of both the Arizona State Parks Heritage Fund, as well as the uh, Game and Fish Heritage Fund. We uh, look to pursue sustainable and dedicated funding sources for Arizona's wildlife, open space, parks, and historic cultural programs and activities. Of course, we love to monitor state legislative and agency activity and then keep all Arizonans informed on the benefit of our state's wildlife, open space, parks and, and historic and cultural resources. So that's a little bit about us. Here's our legislative task force. This was us last year when we were all zoom and zoom in, but we do meet regularly. Um, we uh, meet to uh, really discuss um, who we want to uh, meet with or reach out to for any bills that we may be looking at uh, wanting to introduce during the legislative session. We communicate regularly with our legislators. We provide testimony. Um, last year, of course, we provided it online and this year we're planning on doing it in person. Oh, that's my Charlie. Charlie, he loves when I talk about legislators. <laughs> And then we keep track of progress, how the bills are moving through, what are the good bills that we want to, um, uh, you know, express support for, and then what are those anti bills that we just, you know, really hope don't make it all the way to the end. Um, okay, I'm gonna, you gonna let the people in. There you go. Great. So let's talk about the Heritage Fund. And I like this slide um, because if you are new to Arizona or you haven't really been, you're maybe new in your role and you haven't, don't know that much about the Arizona Heritage Fund. When I moved to Arizona in uh, 2000, of course, there was a learning curve for me because I came from a different state and I had never heard of the Arizona Heritage Fund. So really it was created in 1990 
by a voter initiative to protect and promote Arizona's natural, cultural, and historic resources. So from 1990 to 2009, up to two, 20 million annually from the lottery was divided evenly between the Arizona Game and Fish and Arizona State Parks. Um, I'll go a little bit in uh, what each of those uh, variables are with the two different agencies in the Heritage Fund. But from 1991 to 2010, we were on our, you know, we were just on a roll. We, State Parks was giving out grants through their um, agency for uh, regional, local, regional, and state parks, as well as historic preservation, bricks and mortar grants, non-motorized, um, even land acquisition. And then here, and then Game and Fish were using their 10, 10 million to really support all of their non-gaming wildlife programs, their wildlife um, section of the Game and Fish is all supported 100% by the uh, Game and Fish Heritage Fund. And I have a couple of slides in there that I'll share just so you can kind of be aware of the differences because we get that question asked quite a bit. And over that period of time, you can see that state parks awarded a lot of grants resulting in some great statewide projects, uh, really leveraged economic development, uh, restoring our cultural uh, uh, assets, helping uh, local and regional parks really get up off the ground and make improvements. And we had projects in every county, 50% of our the Arizona State Parks Heritage Fund product, um, projects, 50% were in rural Arizona. And then came 2010, <laughs> the day of gloom, the year of gloom. And legislation swept the State Parks Heritage Fund and eliminated it from statute to balance the budget. Now, Game and Fish, they had a little bit stronger body, lobbying body, I guess, and they were not impacted and continue today to receive that 10 million in annual lottery funds. And they focus on protecting endangered species, acquire habitat for the benefit of sensitive species, provide access to outdoor recreational opportunities, and educate the public about um, Arizona's wildlife. Now, we were a little uh, well, upset when this happened. And starting in 2010, every year we had been coming back and trying to get uh, the Arizona State Parks Heritage Fund back in statue. I'll go, I have another slide for this. So this shows you of uh, the Heritage Fund grant project totals by county. Um, and this was from 1991 up to when they swept it and 2010. Now, this is a very, very important piece. We use this quite a bit when we're educating our legislators, trying to um, let them see that in every county there was impact. Um, back between 1991 and 2010. And, you know, like anything, unless you really show the overall cumulative impact, we kind of forget year by year how important these, uh, these uh, grant funds are. Um, so this is a really key uh, piece that we like to use. Um, and I'm just going to give you some samples of the projects funded by the Arizona Heritage Fund between 1990 and 10. Um, this was one of the collateral pieces that was used, or the, uh, this was a sign, and you may be out and about in, in some of the rural communities. They still have some of the signage up. They also have signage for game and fish, especially if you go to any of the fish hatcheries or some of the ponds, the fishing program, you'll see some of the signs that give recognition to the Heritage Fund. So we had numerous parks. Numerous parks and actually um, I'll go back to the parks because when we got um, 5 million uh, appropriated last year for the heritage state parks heritage fund. We have already exhausted the 2.5 million that was dedicated to this category because parks, especially the regional and local and regional parks are in dire need of updates, as well as over these 10 years, they have been acquiring land and uh, wanting to develop it into their to service their growing populations in their uh, 
cities and counties, right? And recreational sites, um, whether it was a soccer field, a baseball field, we're seeing um, lots of things with splash pads now, you know, that's kind of the new trend. So it does uh, provide funding for that. And all kinds of trails, non-motorized trails, um, trails um, for horseback riding, of course, you see there lots of signage. And if there in the little right-hand corner, you'll see one of the little old um, heritage fund uh, placards uh, recognizing that this was funded through the Heritage Fund. And archaeological sites, sorry, um, I've been talking all morning, and these are a few of them, the Hayden uh, Butte um, in Tempe, down in, over in Springerville, and then Mesa. And these are very key to protecting our historical uh, assets. And then of course, there's history and history. And the one thing about the uh, um, Arizona State Parks Heritage Fund, the historic preservation category, it is one of the few, if not the only one in Arizona, but one of the few funding grants that a nonprofit or a city or a municipality or educational institution can apply for, for bricks and mortar. And as we know with our historic buildings, bricks and mortar is the hardest piece. We can find grants for planning and for studies, um, maybe for some marketing, but for finding the bricks and mortar so key and they've been used for roof repairs, HVAC replacement, um, windows, doors, everything you can imagine to bring these beautiful historic assets back into the economies, of, especially in our rural communities. And I like the example of this one down here, Silver King, because when I moved here in uh, 2000, one of my first clients was Florence and it was the Main Street program. And we were working with the Silver King Hotel and this is how I saw it. And I'm like, why is it taking you 15, 20 years to get this to this point? And of course, again, it was because of the funding mechanisms in place that just you know kept trying to knit everything together to have impact. Well, long story short, the town took, purchased it, the town has invested it over the years, it has used his heritage fund as well as other resources. And if you go to Florence today, this is a thriving economic catalytic uh, building that sits beautifully in their Main Street district. So there's an example. And then Game and Fish. So just switch gears, think Game and Fish Heritage Fund. And this is actually a slideshow that they uh, provided for us at um, our annual meeting in 2020. And I just like to share it with you. So you get some little feel because people may ask you about the Game and Fish Heritage Fund. How is it different than the state parks? Why do they get their 10 million? What do they spend it on? So this shows you some of how they break up the pie um, for environmental education, of course, they have uh, programs dealing with basic principles and to enhance the public awareness of safeguarding our natural resources. They have fund wildlife ambassadors in classroom programming, professional educator um, development. Uh, they have trainings. Um, and then the National Lottery Conference is held in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Hmm, I don't know about that. That's this is their slide, so I can't go much on that one. Then the Wildlife Center, which is up north, um, and it is a beautiful facility. It's home to their animal ambassadors. It's on-site office space and meeting area for the growing number of volunteer educators and wildlife caretakers that they do in um, either have as volunteers or do um, have as uh, paid staff. They have a medical treatment and quarantine observation area. And then this is where also you will see the tortoise adoption program. Um, if you have not been up north to see this beautiful facility, put it on your list. It is a beautiful and, um, piece of how um, you know, the resources from the lottery are being reinvested back into our uh, wildlife and non-gaming uh, uh, efforts for Arizona. And then um, they have the Heritage Fund. Now their little piece of the Heritage Fund is pretty small. In the past, they, they would fund out $420,000 um, 
Yes, and doesn't go really far. And it's very dedicated to specific areas. Um, and this is just showing you um, a little bit of the, the 20 grants awarded in 2020. And then since 1992, they have granted out 900 grants and $7 million. Now they do a lot of with research protection. And then they also have the school education or the uh, K through 12 uh, small grants program. So as I said back, one of our areas is that we monitor the um, Game and Fish Heritage Fund activity. And we noticed that they in 2020 did not put out grants or 2021 and they were under review. And then when they rolled it back out, they have taken off some of the specific areas that went into research and other areas. They were just showing the, um, the $32,000 that they grant out for the K through 12 small grants program. And they were then have now, and we just met with um, Director Gray and two of his staff the other day, our task force did, to talk about what was the change that they uh, determined to do with these other granting dollars. And um, from looking at the process, how encumbersome it was um, for as much money as they were granting out, they've decided to switch to more of a proposal based. And so um, if anyone is interested in wanting to know about those proposals for Game and Fish, you can contact um, their wildlife director and there's the website down on the bottom and they'll go into detail what you can use those grants for. So now switch gears again, we're back to our efforts for because this really took us 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, nine years, um, to reinstate the Arizona State Parks Heritage Fund. And of course, our first effort was just to get it back in statue. So um, we did accomplish that in 2019 with uh, the bipartisan support of two different bills we supported from represent House Representative Joanne Osborne, one of our champions, and then also from Senator Brophy McGee. And it was passed. We had two, one that wanted to restore it back into the lottery as the citizens intended it for the full 10 million. And then the other um, bill, SB um, 1241, which was passed, gave us the opportunity to fund it from grants, donations, and appropriations. Of course, that's the one that was signed back into statute. And this is one of our shining moments that we actually got to come to the signing of the statute uh, with Governor Ducey. And that's our board, some of the state parks, uh, proud moment, yay. Now we had to figure out how to get it funded, to get money in it, because it's one thing to be sitting as a law, it's another thing to have any money attached. And of course, that was always our goal. So we began our efforts in 2020. And um, to, uh, oh, this is how the, the uh, sorry, the statue um, sits now. So of any money that comes into SB 1241, the Arizona uh, State Parks Heritage Fund, 50% of that goes to local, regional, and state parks for outdoor recreation, open space development, restoration, or renovation. 30% of any dollars will go to, go to historic preservation, 10% goes to tra trails, and 10% goes to education. What we eliminated from the new statue was land acquisition. It was just never um, something that was really uh, looked at as um, bipartisan support. So we took that out and, and we go and we um, have 10% goes to education. The picture here on the, on the left is our, the state parks director. And at our 30th anniversary of the Heritage Fund, we prepared these stand up banners and presented them to uh, state parks to the game and fish and to the lottery, thanking them for um, the 30 years of the Heritage Fund. And this is when we presented it to um, our director from State Parks. So then, you know, our outreach efforts between in 19, uh, between 2019 and 2021, and of course we have the, we have the pandemic in there. And so things got really messy. Um, these are kind of the ways that we do our outreach. We um, have always had and continue to have a resolution from the League of Cities and Towns, as well as the county supervisors have adopted a resolution or adopted 2020 fun financial 
priority supporting the appropriations for the Heritage Fund. We've done sign-on letters in the past or sign-ons and we uh, really targeted um, in, 20, in 2020 and 2021, um, the mayors and county supervisors, we had 45 of them sign on in support. Of course, we have a robust email blast. Um, we use social media, we make personal calls. And for our efforts for restoring the state parks heritage fund back in statue, we were awarded the governor's heritage preservation honor award. And there's a picture of that. And then we were also awarded um, in 2019 um, Arizona Forwards Environmental Excellence Award in the Division of um, Healthy Communities, Parks and Trails Division. And we presented that to um, uh, House Representative Joanne Osborne. It was a proud moment for us. Um, and there she is getting, showing off the beautiful, pla the beautiful, uh, I guess, you know, award. So then 2020 started, we were off to a roaring start. I'm not even gonna go into what happened, we all know. And everything just went uh, you know, down the tubes fast. So that, those efforts really were stopped in 2020. Um, then we started back up in 2021 and we were ready to go, right? And again, we've had um, the uh, uh, concept or the approach to run two bills one from the Senate and one from the House, being slightly different. Um, with the new statue, of course, we could have appropriations, get do uh, donations, grants, and appropriations in that one. So the House bill we ran in 2021 was the Appropriation um, Heritage Fund. And we asked for 10 million. We always ask for 10 million because that's what back in 1990, that's what the citizens passed with the initiative and that's the intent. And we have been true and loyal to that and continue to this very day. And then we had, um, and of course we had Republican uh, uh, House Representative Osborne um, sponsored the bill. We had really strong bipartisan support for it. These are the co-sponsors. And then SB 1384, that would be putting it, restoring it back in the lottery. And we thanked um, Senator TJ Choke for introducing that bill. He had no uh, sponsors. Again, here's all of the ways that we have worked um, to educate, reach out, uh, get support for uh, the two bills. And a key part of our efforts has been in the last two, three years, we have been part of the Arizona Public Lands Coalition that has representatives from different agencies that are looking at public lands as well as the importance of outdoor recreation. And so they've been a huge help in helping us um, get the word out and educating it as well as Sierra's Club. And we thank all those other associations that are part of our uh, partner team. And yes, June 30th, 2021, woohoo, we did the happy dance because the Senate, uh, the governor signed 5 million to fund one-time appropriation to fund the Arizona State Parks Heritage Fund. Now, what happened to the 10 million? Well, you know, we call it the sausage making, cutting and dicing and sausage making. And this is what we came out with and we were very excited and continue to be excited about that, that we got funding back into the State Parks Heritage Fund, which was part of our 10 plus years of uh, working hard at that. And this is a sample of the thank you, uh, our victory lap, as I call it. We placed this uh, thank you ad in uh, the districts, in TJ's district and in Osborne's district, thanking them. Thanking them and all of the Arizonans that uh, partake, we uh, placed it in several other publications, plus we spread it high, you know, along our social media and through our email. So that brings us to this year, right? Well, almost, but I wanted to go over was showing you that we immediately met with state parks once we had the appropriations placed back in, um, it funded. And we met with them, I see we signed on uh, June, I forget the date that we signed this, but 
um, the minute it was signed, we started meeting with uh, state parks and talking about the process to get the dollars out on the street as fast as we can because we had one year to spend down five million. And coming up into uh, 2022 legislative session, we wanted to show that these dollars are getting out there, they're being exhausted, and we need to fund it again. We didn't want to come back and say, oh, well, we haven't spent any of the dollars or that none of the grants have been awarded. So uh, state parks has been fabulous. Their staff is fabulous. They had set up already prior to um, 2021, 22 uh, Heritage Fund um, grants going out a uh, online portal. And I am so glad today that I can show you that as of today's date, we they have awarded 50%. They have awarded um, almost all the 2.5 million that's allocated for local, regional, and state parks to these various parks for various projects. And the one thing, and, and this slide I have to change, they have a town of Wilcox in here, and it's not even spelled right, um, as legislative district 30, but it's actually 14. So I caught it on the, the uh, marketing collateral. I'll change it on this PowerPoint so you have the correct one. I, I'm sorry about that, Sandy, that I didn't get that changed in time. <laughs> I just found this out today. Um, so here is an example. And one of the agreements that state parks um, said to us when we wanted to the Alliance, because we were one of their, you know, we were really wanting them to get the dollars out. They did, we did workshops. They did workshops. They, Mickey uh, Rogers, the chief grants administrator there at state parks and his team have been great meeting with all these folks that wanted to apply. Um, was that um, they determined, state parks determined they were gonna spend nothing on state parks. All of this was gonna go out to local and regional parks. There's so much pinned up uh, need and demand that that was one thing that state parks said. So we were so fortunate for that. Now there is a match. It's a 50-50 match for the uh, local, regional and state parks. And as you can see here, much of the match that has come through, they're using the Land, Water, and Conservation Fund, which of course was the Great American Act, Great Outdoors American Act that was signed into law. And so they, and State Parks has a lot of money sitting there. So these uh, communities and these rural communities were able to leverage those dollars with the Heritage Fund. And in the past, because land and water needs a 50-50 match, they've never been able to really come up in the last 10 years with that match. So that's exciting economic um, reinvestment, in, especially into our um, into our real communities. And I was on the call where they just approved the city of Wilcox and Clarkdale uh, parks. And both of those communities said, these parks are the mainstay to our quality of life. We hold our events there. These are places that people come and recreate. This is where we have our sporting programs for our, our youth. And so they're a key piece and we're so proud that we're able to say that the Heritage Fund was able to uh, fund these projects. Here's historic preservation. These are the only two, um, uh, SHPO, the State Office of Historic, Historic, Historic Preservation is the agency that oversees this heritage fund uh, category. And they're gonna be rolling out their projects that are up for consideration and approval on a quarterly basis. So these two were the first quarter and we have no um, hesitation to say that by March that the rest of the remaining 1.5 million will be exhausted. There is these, you know, these are projects that are uh, need bricks and mortar and are, you know, desperate for those kind of resources. Here's our uh, non-motorized trails. Uh, uh, improvements to Buffalo Trail Park trail improvements and then the Verde Valley uh, cyclist. Um, so you can see there those uh, projects and then the outdoor education. And this one was so interesting to listen to their presenters. The, the Valley, uh, Verde Valley will fund, and this is actually going to fund a program coordinator. This is a nonprofit in the Verde Valley that is part of this after school program and has introduced mountain biking to youth 
And when they started, they had one school and they now have 13 schools. And this is a picture of all the youth that are uh, getting education on mountain biking, programming, taking them on mountain biking trips. And I just love that concept. And then, oh, I see one of my board of directors is joining me, Jim, great. And then the Wickenburg Cultural and Conservation Foundation, um, they're gonna be doing a Leave No Trace video they have a leave no trace volunteer base for their um, efforts, but they're realizing that most of those folks are seasoned people, older people, and they wanna reach the next uh, younger demographic. So they figured the way to do that is to show a video, to create a video. And they are partnering with their school um, and to teach uh, the high school youth that are gonna sign up to be part of this, you know, video making, filmmaking, and it's gonna be a great project. So we're excited for those. So now here we are, 55th legislative session is open and going. And we have Senator Soap who introduced um, Senate Bill 1270. We are only running, uh, uh, looking at one bill right now. Um, and this is to restore it into the lottery. Um, we are looking at 10 million again. The bill was pre uh, presented as 3 million, but we feel there'll be an opportunity for SOAP to uh, uh, introduce that bill. And then we'll look at the house, bringing it up to 10 million. It is going to be heard at the Senate Appropriations Committee this Tuesday at two o'clock. Um, we wanna encourage you if you can um, go on to the, and you're in, uh, supportive of the Heritage Fund and the type of projects that it does to go on the request to speak uh, system and, and uh, register um, to, in support of, call your legislators uh, in your district to uh, vote yes. Um, we have an email that just went out that has uh, the list of the 10 uh, appropriation, Senate Appropriation Committee members on it with their phone numbers. Of course, you can find that on azlegislative.gov or azledge.gov. Um, and we're really excited. We are so hopeful and uh, we'll be there to testify. I will be, I'm hoping a couple of my board members will be there to testify. And then this is our contact information. There's our website. Um, you can email, call. Um, we have a, a robust Facebook page that I try to get information out. We don't send, you know, just junky emails out. We, we're very uh, strategic about sending that. So if you sign up for it, don't worry. We're not, you're not going to get bombarded with a, an email an hour. Um, you may get one, uh, one a month or two a month when we're in legislative, the rest of the time, not as much. So with that said, Sandy, I am done. I think I whipped through that pretty quick. And uh, if there's any questions, well, I guess we can go ahead and take them at this time. Thank you so much, Lenny. Lots of great information there. I appreciate all your work on this and uh, if folks want to either unmute and ask your question or place your question in the chat uh, right now, we'll go ahead and take them. Maybe I did such a great job, nobody has any questions. <laughs> it was pretty comprehensive. I have one question. Um, I, I'm glad you said that you were hoping that it could be bumped up to 10 million. I'm wondering what was the thinking of having it start at three million? <laughs> well, let me tell you, it wasn't our thinking. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> From conversation with our sponsor, I don't think it was his thinking either. Um, and, and my board, my vice president, uh, Jim McPherson's on, so he can chime in too. Yes, we were all quite surprised and it took a bit of uh, some uh, digging to find out what happened. Um, let's just say it was not planned. Okay. Looks like, um, oh, did you want to add something, Jim? Go ahead. And move, and Senator Shope uh, understands that and uh, uh, I think is supportive of the 10 million. Excellent. Good. So, so people could, when they're testifying on it, should they mention that? 
Go for 10 million. Go for okay. 10 million. That's our motto. <laughs> All right. Our motto for 10 years. And I would have to say, um, not I, there may be another question, but just to kind of, if everybody is aware that Governor Ducey is um, appropriating a, a big chunk of money to uh, state parks, like $138 million appropriation. And uh, they are dedicating that all, of course they have to, all to just state parks. Um, and when we talk about the Heritage Fund, we need to remember that this is more than just, this is more than just state parks. It sits in state parks under their agency to distribute the Heritage Fund grants, but it's for regional and local parks, historic preservation properties, buildings, and non-motorized and outdoor education. So really per, uh, uh, different type of pool and, and it's continuing. Once we get it back into the lottery and it's restored, then it will continue on, we hope every year at the 10 million where the 138 million, he's gonna have one time appropriation. Uh, if, Thank and you. If I could, and I'm sorry, if I could add, because um, you know the, the grants that applications have been put in this year are, there's significant numbers not only the number of grant applications, but the, the dollar amounts asked for. So that those funds could go quickly. And that's why we're, we're going, you know, we have to go back this next year uh, to ask for 10 million. And if it's in the lottery, then, you know, the original funding source, then it's 10 million, 10 million, 10 million. And we don't have to go back and ask. And those unmet needs can be funded um, from here on out, knock on wood. Great, thank you. Um, Andre Miller? Yeah, thanks. Uh, my name is Andre. I'm with Western Resource Advocates. I, I just had a hoping you could speak. I was hoping you could speak to LWCF a little bit more. Um, and I guess my question is, is the Arizona Heritage Program and state parks in any way administra administratively attached to LWCF state and local assistance program? And how, how were the two programs able to communicate to issue these grants in the last year with new Great American Outdoors Act money? and how that could or could not be improved in the near future? Well, that's quite the question. Well, the um, Arizona Heritage Alliance is not attached at all to state parks. We are a freestanding nonprofit and we basically are, oh. right? And oh, yeah, sorry, sorry if I misspoke. I didn't, I didn't mean the Heritage Alliance. I meant the Heritage Program in state parks and how that's attached to LWCF in state parks as well. To um, the, the land and water conservation? That what you're uh, correct. Okay. Well, um, the money that state parks received um, from the uh, from the governor to through the uh, the land and water and conservation fund came to state parks, and so they have that that those dollars, millions of dollars to administer, and it need and they have to um, that uh, fund has a fifty percent match, right? And so we are looking at marrying the heritage fund, which needs a 50% match from the parks. And if it's an appropriate project that aligns with the land and water and conservation fund, they can use that for the match then to enable them to have a bigger amount of funding that can support their project. And why we saw that the, that was an advantage is, and, and Jim can expand on this if I'm saying it wrong, but many of our rural communities could not go for land, water, and, and conservation fund because they could not come up with the $500,000 match, as you saw the town of Wilcox, city of Wilcox and town of Cl uh, Clarksdale to improve their parks. So with Heritage Fund, they can do the $500,000 that can be a match for land and water conservation. And now their funding source is a million dollars where before they could just go for the 500,000 um, with Heritage Fund, but they would still have to have a match. So now the match works together. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's great. I, I, I was just really wondering if, there, if you had any difficulties in getting those two programs to talk to each other. Um, you know, no. Oh, okay, no. Was, no, one of the great things about that I'm, I've been seeing this past year is the um, interest and willingness of state parks staff who are working on these grants to, to talk with individuals and organizations that are interested in grants, uh, be it Heritage Fund or, or some of the others that are on their webpage. And there's, a, there's an extensive list to see how, you know, what, what works best, 
what uh, percentages of what funds can can be can work together. Um, so a call in to their staff, Mickey Rogers is a you know kind of the, the go to person or one of the go to people yeah. to ask uh, those questions and um, and they all you know work together to to maximize the dollars and and get them out and do good things. Yeah, and part of the Heritage Fund, um, even before a community, a municipality or a community could apply for the, um, let's say, the, the local, regional, and state parks category is that ship, uh, or excuse me, state parks had to visit the site to see and see if they were prepared for applying so they wouldn't be wasting their time or their, you know, their, their resources, or at that time also talking to them how to maybe look at a, a marrying the two. And I know the same is with the historic preservation piece that uh, the State Office of Historic Preservation will meet with and discuss the grant and look at the project and make sure it's in line with the criteria and um, how to come up with the match, the in-kind match. Um, you know, some of our urban town cities like Buckeye, they didn't use land and water conservation. They had the $500,000 dedicated in their CIP budget. And they are using those 500,000 that they're getting from impact fees or development fees or just their budget to, to match. So it isn't necessarily always used, but we knew for our rural communities, it would be a big pump, a big you know, thumbs up uh, way to get some actual projects that have impact. Great, thank you very much. And You're very thank you welcome. for the presentation. Thank you. Get those applications in. <laughs> <laughs> any um, any additional questions that anyone has? Um, just to thank you in the chat. Yeah, very comprehensive. Um, uh, so hopefully, if folks can at least uh, sign in on request to speak in support, and you can add. Uh, a comment in there and in your comment if you can say support but would like to see the full 10 million that should be uh, um, appropriated appropriated for it and uh, oh I know I had one um, other question too before mm -hmm. um, we go I saw that in that rural uh, management area bill that uh, Representative Cobb has that she is establishing a water heritage fund. Hmm. Um, so that might be something to take a look at just to see how it impacts the other funds. But I just wanted to let you know it would be at the Department of Water Resources and to help fund uh, these rural water uh, management area entities so uh, it, i just know, wanted to give you a heads up on it if you hadn't seen it so i had not seen it and is it coming through the is it being proposed through the lottery yes that's what caught my attention <laughs> always right okay i'll I'll, get, I'll send you that bill number too I, I that's good to know thank you um okay, okay. it sounds like we're we're good. Thanks again, uh, Lonnie and Jim and everyone. Uh, have a great uh, rest of your day. We, we appreciate it. Okay, I'll send you the slide deck and I'll make that change on the one district. So perfect. Okay. Thank you, Sandy. Bye bye now. <laughs>